Hello. Welcome to Math 10C Online Anytime, the Moodle page. This is just a quick video to show you some of the key points of the, of the Moodle page and exactly what you'll need to get started. So right at the top here, there are going to be different announcements that I'll be putting up every so often if there's a major change. We have our course outline you can click on, which will give you all the rundown of the course, how the marks are broken down, that sort of thing. There's also a welcome booklet that can give you some key information. If you ever book an appointment with me, we can meet online in this classroom right here. You just click on this link. I also have some office hours set up for my different courses, Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can click here to just jump into that room if you have any questions. You can also find my contact info here on the right side. That's pretty standard for just about any instructor in, in Norquest. Now, to get started with things, you'll want to jump into detailed course information, this tab right here. There is a personalized course scheduler, which can help give you a bit of structure if you're not sure how long things should be taking. It is flexible though, you can make adjustments. It's not a hard deadline. Here's the formula sheet that you get to use in the exams and for all of your assignments. And then the Math 10C workbook that you can print out. It's broken down by chapter. Let's jump back up to detailed course information back here. There is also some additional help links but the big thing to look at here is once you're ready to get started, you can jump into Unit 1, Numbers and Exponents. Now, there is a bit of an explanation in the first unit of what to cover. So I'd give this stuff a read, talking about the mandatory lesson content and the optional helpful lesson content. The first place you might want to take a quick look at is uh, the Unit 1 Refresher Lessons. This is just a brief page that has a few links to some skills that you'll probably need for this unit. If you need brushing up on the Pythagorean Theorem, or how to divide fractions, or the wonderful world of adding and subtracting fractions is a common one, you can stop by here. From there, wait for the computer, there we are, jump into the Unit 1 Lessons section. Click No there. You'll come to this page here, and it's organized in such a way that it's broken down pretty closely to the lessons in the workbook. Pretty close. It's not always exactly the same. Every now and then there is something in the workbook that we don't cover in this course. But for now, Lesson 1 jumps into prime factors. We have the mandatory lesson content. This stuff will be on the exam. And then there is some extra info that can help you if you're not sure about any of the concepts. So when you click on one of these pieces of content here, it looks very much like the workbook. In fact, it is the workbook. The big thing here is we have short to the point video lessons for all of the class examples to break some of this stuff down. And I would recommend following along with the videos, taking notes as you go, following along with the example. Don't just let the video play and just watch kind of without doing anything. I'd strongly recommend jotting stuff down as you're watching these. Then from here, it goes into the assignment in the workbook. Not for marks, but it is good practice. You'll probably need to be doing, at, at the very least, most of the assignment questions, if not all of them, if you plan on having it mastered. And it does come with solutions as well. So, just going to jump back out of here. Once you've gone through those lessons and you're feeling comfortable with them, I might have a little bit of extra information, videos attached, that sort of thing in certain places, so take a look at that, especially if you think it's relevant. Practice tests are useful. They don't count for marks again, 
but they're that practice. If you're comfortable with the practice test, you are going to be comfortable with the assignment in the exam. Then we get down to the unit one assignment. That will be the next stop. You don't have to print this off necessarily. You can write your answers on paper or even if you're comfortable doing it electronically, you can do that as well. Go through this, you will submit to me four marks. And to submit that, once you have your work completed, you can take pictures of that, save it as a PDF, let me know if you need a hand with that, and you can add a submission. Right now I've got a little default piece in there, which you can always go in and edit and add to it. This can be as simple as dragging and dropping into this little box here. And then once you're finished that, make sure you hit Submit Assignment I get a notification, I can mark that, get you some feedback, then you can take that into the exam when you're ready. So once that's done, the next stop is your unit test. The unit tests as of right now are open book. That can be misleading though. If you don't have a good understanding of the material, open book doesn't help you very much. So really, the, once you're done that, you go on to the next unit, of course, which is very similar, just without all of the different explanations. We have a refresher, the lessons, some practice, the assignment, the exam. This course should ultimately fall into a bit of a pattern here. Start with the unit review to make sure you have the skill, the prerequisite skills, those refresher lessons, start there. Then from there, you move over to unit lessons. Oh, that's working now. You know what? That's staying in. Let me get my draw tool so we can make a few little notes here that makes more sense. Start here, and it's just the old concepts that you need to know. Sometimes it's been a little while since you've actually used some of those concepts, depending on the last time you were in a course. So take a look at the review, or sometimes it's, I think I've labeled it actually the refresher lessons. Then you've got the unit lessons. Go through those video examples, do some of the questions in the workbook, then you can get into those workbook assignments, like I was just saying. Now you can tackle your unit assignment. Make sure you get my feedback. A lot of times people are in a rush, especially if they're not fans of math, which I do understand. They submit that unit assignment and then go straight to the exam. This is not advisable. If there is an error in your process or there's something you're missing in the unit assignment, you don't get it checked out and fixed, that's going to carry over to the unit exam and that's going to start affecting your mark. In fact, I would recommend that you use me as a resource. If you're not sure about anything, you can go straight to here at any point, not just after the assignment, of course. So you can contact me through email. There's also the Remind app, which I will have sent an invite to, to you. So please make use of, of me. It's my job. A lot of people feel like it's, uh, it's a bother to be asking me stuff. It is not at all. That's what I'm here for. Let me know if something isn't making sense so we can get, dealt, get it dealt with so you're back on track. That's okay, we don't have to save all those fancy arrows. So, after Unit 3, you'll then be on to the midterm, and then from there, getting into the final exam after Unit 4, 5, 6, and 7. But that is well down the road. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope this gives an idea, at least, of the real, the, the key spine, the, the real center of what you need here in this course. It can be, the Moodle page can be confusing, so hopefully this clears some of those things up. Happy studying!